Hello, hello, hello. This is Dave from Toronto and Elta from Vegas. Lively Las Vegas. <laughs> is it very lively right now, Elta? Um, it's lively in my little world, of course, but no, it's, you know, we were here in 2008 when it was really shut down and there was nobody on the strip, mm. but all the casinos were open. So mm -hmm. even though there was no one there and it was very strange looking, the casinos were open. And now I'm sure you know that everything's closed. So, so actually, I, I, I might be able to read that, but just give me a little bit more insight into what's that like from you. And this is, again, 2008 was one reflection. What's this like there in Vegas? Well, we bought our house three miles from the Las Vegas Strip right. because, um, as you recall, I married a Trinidadian who really just lived to party, and we were the perfect <laughs> match. It's like, perfect. All I want to do is party, too. So back in the day, you know, 20 years ago, before there was Uber, we thought, well, we could just get really messed up and just walk home. Let's buy the first house we can find. So we live pretty close to the Strip. We live in a little cul-de-sac, and it's nice and safe and everything. But we live close to the Strip, and I still go there, of course. And it's, it's, uh, it's devastating to have, <clears throat> excuse me, to have no cars on the Strip. It's devastating at nighttime. I've only done it once because it really is a little painful. We're putting up nice signs, you know, be strong and that sort of thing. But my heart continues to hurt for the thousands of people that are laid off because we're just a service industry in Las Vegas. I work from home like you, so I'm super, super lucky. But we're a service industry and people are laid off and they're hurting and, you know, paycheck to paycheck. It's, 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 it's heartbreaking. It really is. Mm -hmm. And so you're using the term heartbreaking. And you yeah. know me, I'm always one of these people who's going to pick you up on words, right? Right. And it's, it's, it's really <laughs> expressing it with someone. Again, I, I've actually learned discernment, not to say it to everyone yet, with someone like you, who I, I think we have this heart, this love, this respect. Um, Thank you. Yeah. What is heartbreaking really? In what ways is that serving you right now? Well, thank you for bringing it to my attention because I say broken all the time because I am heartbroken. However, I know better than to say it. So I really do need to stop saying it. But I am, you know, I, my heart is currently broken. Yes. <laughs> or at least, you know, torn, torn. Yeah. It's torn. I feel like it's torn. Yes. Well, it's, again, I, I, I called mainly because I wanted to express some condolences face to face and just you. let you know that you're loved and uh, your loves in your life are loved. And uh, I have sent some love to to your beloved and um, you. part of I, I and whether my eye starts to tear also we, <laughs> we also know th those are blessings right and I think one of the metaphors is uh, any tear it comes down it's a it's like a raindrop into the oceans of healing I hope so I should be healed then well you got a lot of uh, <laughs> you've got a lot of energy and you've got this uh, incredible ocean that I decided to bring with me today to uh, bring to Vegas Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. so Share a little bit about mm, moving to acceptance, grieving. What's that process been? Are you familiar with the five stages of grieving? Fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. Uh, that, yeah, that's the first page. <laughs> <laughs> actually, no, that's I have the, a move. <laughs> no, that's that's actually the second. The first one is denial, and then it's yeah, anger. Yeah, I like that one. And then it's anger. Denial, anger. And then it's yeah. bargaining. And then it's depression, ah. and then it's acceptance. No. So those are the five stages that are often talked about in grieving. It sounds like you're doing really good in that anger one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've done all four in one day, but yes, I'm. It was so interesting because um, I don't know if you know the story, but when I I was married for 20 years to my first husband, and when I decided to remarry, I made a list of a hundred about 180 things that I wanted in a husband. Right. Oh my God. Yes. So uh, just to be entertaining, I made a list of about 150 things because what was important to me was all energy, loving, kind, outgoing, joyful. And I was living in San Diego. I was sober for 18 months. I hadn't slept with anybody for 18 months. Oh, my God, a personal best. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm walking down Las Vegas Strip. You know, I'm a super friendly girl. I Sometimes I don't see the difference between men and women. I just see, I like that. I like that. That's beautiful, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so I'm walking down Las Vegas Strip. I mean, excuse me, San Diego. And these women are coming up to me. and They're being really friendly. And I'm thinking, 
okay, I get friendly because you know how friendly we are, but I think there's more to what they're sharing here, you know, but let me go home and look at my list. So I go home and look at my list and there wasn't one thing on there about being male. Right. I mean, just, you know, six foot three, I would think that would be guy, but apparently God needs to be really specific. Mm -hmm. No penis. So I write like 40 (laughs) things on penises. It was great. I should publish that book, right? You should, yes. (laughs) <laughs> so I rewrote, I just added, you know, and he's male and he's this, that, and the other. So I wrote this list of 187 things and or 180 and some things. And um, as we track it, Rashid got in a sailboat in Trinidad. He was the captain to bring it to San Diego. And, you know, he made it to San Diego. We met two, two or three weeks after he landed. The first day that we met, it was over. He, you know, I knew he wasn't the one because he was way too young. I didn't know what the hell he was saying. I could never understand him. (laughs) But he just went, oh, no, you're the one. It's like, no, you're the one. And I said, no, men feel like I'm the one because I'm bouncy and blonde and big boobs. And they go, I like her. But they're always engineers. And they like me for about two to three years. And then I really get on their nerves. It's like, Mm -hmm. oh, my God, do you ever shut up? And I go, no, I don't. But the good news is I'm mostly joyful. I'm really fun. But you're an engineer. I'm going to get on your nerves. He goes, no, no, you're fine. So, you know, we had 20 years of marriage. It was a really extraordinarily good marriage. And for him to leave suddenly, and the little fucker waited till I was out of town and just left when I was out of town. I mean, he did everything right for him. Had a coronary, dropped dead instantly. He was gone instantly. He, you know, we kept him on life support so that we could harvest his organs, which was unbelievable. But the, I don't know what I can share, except that the, I always knew, I mean, I tried not to think about this, but we'd restarted his heart like five times. So we knew he had an issue, but supposedly he was fine. He, you know, had an operation, he was fine. So when he, when he passed, you know, my daughter came and stayed with me for Alaska and for two weeks, I got stuff done. Sure. I got stuff done. And I always assumed that if Rashid left, I'm done. I'm going to go walk in front of the first bus or something. Uh-huh. But you do go through this time where I don't know who takes over, but someone takes over. But man, when that wears off, what a hangover. Uh-huh. You know, what a hangover. When you wake up and you realize that this person that really, you know, was everything to you is gone it's it's devastating it's mm-hmm. devastating yep. and I, I i started to mention because i get a kick out of this i'm definitely metaphysical you know i've been channeling all my life etc and so i know where rashid is i understand how he's happy he is and i'm real happy for him <laughs> 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 yeah, i'm so happy for you <laughs> and if i could get Not- that cricket back <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I get you a soccer ball in your head. And, you know, I'm sure he's gone through his life review. And, you know, I, I chat with him all the time. But um, it's it's hard. It's, mm. it's just hard. And I know that everybody goes through this. or not. Everybody no, no, no. Goes. I'm going to stop you there, Sweets, because, no, not everyone goes through what you go through. Your, 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 your experience with Rashid, very, very special. Um, yeah. The fact that you're even saying that you're still speaking with him and that you oh, – yeah. And you know that other people, they got to learn to believe that other people need, need to be aware that what you just said about him choosing to leave when he chose and like, there's a, there's a, a wisdom that you're speaking that I haven't met a lot of people who truly can live that and, and say it and believe it. And you're, so your, your, your experience is very, it's, it's beautiful. And I, I'd love you to explain a little bit of that duality on the one hand, you just said you're, you really are a metaphysical being. You, you truly know that. You're the one of these people that has lived it. Yes. And then the other side, you are a human. You are yeah. somebody who has these emotions that on the, you, 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 you're aware of the ones you should choose. And then these ones that are coming in and they're hitting you like a bit of a tsunami or they're hitting you with like a, a ton of bricks. So let's delve a little bit on, on when you're experiencing some of those emotions and even label them a little bit so people can get an idea of the swings that you're having. Yeah. Cause I imagine you're having like five days of activities each day these days. <laughs> the 
the thing that I like about this, I, I can't imagine that there's a bigger, I know that we're not here for life lessons, but I can't imagine that there's a bigger lesson in experiencing the death of, you know, the person that you love the most and allowing you to learn to live in the now. Because if you're not in the now, you're in the past or in the future. And um, I'm a greedy little princess Gemini. Mm. You know, I don't know if you remember that or not. Absolutely. <laughs> but, I just, <laughs> but I'm so used to getting my way. Absolutely. I'm so <laughs> and I'm so used to being joyful and happy and, and having people support me and Rashid and everything. Mm. So I know what? I was out this morning. Well, A, I went and put gas in the truck. That's the first in like 50 years. Mm -hmm. I cleaned the windows of my truck out of respect for Rashid. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, taking care of his vehicle because that was important to him. David, I, I've never washed a window on a truck. Come on. That would hurt my fake nails, which mm -hmm. are gone now, but that's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. So it allows you, I mean, I'm really blessed. <sighs> to experience some growth that only could happen through death. Mm -hmm. And the growth is what I always work on. I, every morning I wake up and I go, please make me a better person, which seems to last 15 to 45 minutes, depending on my coffee. <laughs> and then I, you know, I do something funny. But um, having Rashid gone, obviously, has had to make me mature up. But mostly it, it makes you live in the now because if you, I mean, everywhere I look is Rashid. I mean, we've been to every hotel. Absolutely. I live in the house. You know, I'm looking at the pictures, you know, wedding pictures now. So there's no way I went to the park today. There's no way that you can get around constantly, you know, thinking about him. And it's not, I mean, it's just painful. It just friggin' hurts. But the minute you get in the now, you know, I walk around the, uh, the lake. I play with the ducks or the geese. Um, you know, I talk to strangers because that's what I do. Absolutely. You know, then it's okay. The pain is gone because it's it's just like when you're gratitude, you can't be in anything else. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I know that uh, part of my personality is my inability to see very far beyond. Mm. So I have to be, oh, yeah. So I have to be really careful to know that this too is going to pass. Mm -hmm. uh, my brilliant daughter keep saying that, you know, I'm going to have three loves in my life. Mm -hmm. I can't decide if it's going to be a girl or a boy, mm -hmm. you know, I swear to God. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I like boys. <laughs> yes, I know. However, these days they're, uh, they're making changes about that too, right? Yeah, we won't even go there. <laughs> girls, girls are very entertaining, but, you know, we're kind of a pain in the ass. Plus, I love male energy. I uh -huh. love male. Yes. You know, I just, I love men. So, yeah. um, it's... <sighs> You know, the, the thing that I'm entertained by, which I'll share with you, and by entertained by, I mean kind of pissed off, is thank God my metaphys metaphysical people came to me. They gave me books. They gave me love. But if one more person said to me during that first two weeks to a month that he's in a happy place, I just wanted to take my bottle of vodka and hit him over the head. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck that he's in a happy place right now. I don't know how to get out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can't say that, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Well, you can hear because actually the, the part of what I, I, I love, like the fact that you're able to be you, which is so very important and, and someone else might find it to be so different because they can't even really get out of bed. And I imagine there's been some mornings you haven't wanted to get out of bed, yeah. yet you found a way to get out of bed. You know, whether you laughed your way out of bed, whether you cried your way out of bed, whether you, you had something else to serve, whether you... Uh, had something that you needed to do. What are one or two ways that really can assist people who just really in that that place of immobility? Coffee addiction, don't you think? Okay. Yes. You, know, you wake up in the morning and that coffee addiction gets you out of bed. Yep. The, the thing that gets me out of bed, I'm sure you know I'm a Bitcoin enthusiast. I have been for years. Yes. So I get out of bed to help other people. Yes. And I get out of bed reminded that we're here to help other people. Yes. So that's what I do. And sometimes I do it better than other times. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I do it better than other times. But um, now more than ever, <laughs> now more than ever, I'm sure it's true where you are as well. You know, people need a, a plan B. And yes. um, I was doing Mary Kay 
back when my family was super wealthy just because I love what Mary Kay was teaching, not for yeah. the, you know, the $3 that I made per lipstick. But I love, I love what being a business owner teaches you and, and of course, my love for Bitcoin. So I get out of bed. Um, I argue with people about Bitcoin. <laughs> I go, good. why am I doing this? Right. <laughs> and, and they always say, you know, don't ask for it to be easier. Ask for you to be better. So I'm constantly asking nice. for me to be better. Nice, yes. But I will tell you something that really is important that might help people. And that is that I take a lot of CBD. Now, I'm not bipolar because <laughs> I am a retired therapist, so I don't check all the boxes. Mm -hmm. But C CBD, um, I have a, a torn meniscus, so it takes the pain away. But CBD has really allowed me to focus. Mm -hmm. So for someone that is going through pain, um, CBD might be something that just allows them to focus a little bit as well. Do you have a favorite brand or do you have a favorite way to apply it or what, what way are you using it? Um, it's just tin, tin, tincture, is it called, under my tongue? Mm -hmm. And there's so many different kinds. I know that there's several online. Um, however, in Las Vegas, there, there's a 7-Eleven mm -hmm. and a CBT right next to each other. Mm -hmm. So as much as I really do want to support home-based businesses, mm -hmm. it's just in Las Vegas, you get the senior discounts. The, you get all these discounts, so you can get a hundred dollar bottle for like thirty dollars. So right. I, I, yeah, just a, uh, I do use a thousand thousand milligrams, I believe it is. Right. This is super beneficial for me, and I think people are becoming aware that CBD is, you know, it's a good thing. My, uh, my parents, because I'm pretty active these days in the elderly care community here in Brampton, and I started even wanting to bring yoga to the seniors, and. Um, my mom joined me for a couple of yoga classes, but she did find them to be too hard. And then we started, she actually started doing a, a physical education class every Friday when it was open. And uh, then we started talking about the benefits of, of trying different types of cannabis to, for joints, for arthritis. And again, there was a big pushback from a number of her friends. And then what's been happening lately are a number of her friends are actually telling her, her how great it's been for them because it's about the, the pain management. And so what you're, 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 you're reinforcing here is that for you, it's really assist with the pain management so that you actually move without pain, which is such a great way to be if you're so used to feeling pain. Yeah, I've had a torn meniscus for, I think, well, when I knew you, I had a torn meniscus. When mm. I was walking on stage and doing a lot of stage um, presentations, sometimes I'd have to use a cane, which was horrifying. And my knee was almost twice the size, so I couldn't even wear slacks. Right. But since I started taking the CBD two years ago, the wow. knee is perfect. I mean, it still hurts if I do something dumb, but it's, it's perfect. Mm. But even, I mean, that's a beautiful thing. But for the grieving process, it seems to, it doesn't seem to, it, it helps me focus a little bit. And beautiful. it really is. Edgar Tolley, if I ever saw him, I would slap him because, you know, I have to take like THC to be able to listen to him. He's so friggin' slow. But... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know he is. Yes, like, I do. Oh my God! New world, oh my yes. God! Get to the point. Oh, I'm right. there and gone. Yes. But anyway, it really is about living in the now. It's 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 all about living in the now. And it's, I don't know why it's so hard. Mm, probably because because I again I just went through a beautiful chat with a dear friend who his partner of eight years moved on, and he did a beautiful honoring for her. It's uh, he put her, her shoes along the, the place where they, they were going to provide the, the ceremony to cremation. And so he made it a very colorful, beautiful uh, release. And again, he, he's also very metaphysical. And I asked him about sort of going through the denial and then the anger, the bargaining, the depression, the acceptance. And he said, again, he went through it for about two years because she was ill for two years. And he said that he worked through a lot of the energy, yet what was happening is that there was definitely a sadness because of the plans that they had. Exactly. And then there was the bargaining a little bit, yet he also said he is talking to her where she is and he knows that that was her choice. And she had some wonderful revelations the last six months of her, her battle with cancer. And then, and then he did choose to celebrate, 
and celebrate the life. And I guess that's what you're doing. It gives me goosebumps to say that because when you're in a resourceful state, you're celebrating the 20 awesome years you guys had together. When you get sad, you're feeling the lack that there aren't going to be those type of days in the future. Yeah. When you're present, you're either focused on gratitude, yeah. focused on service, focused on being the better you. Yes. And so that celebration might be another way of infusing that energy of life, that energy of when you go and, and wash his, the windows on the truck. Yeah. There's an element of, of celebrating. Like, that's why you're doing it, right? You're, ce you're, you're celebrating that truck. You're celebrating the windows. And you think how ridiculous it is, yet you're finding the celebration, the honoring. And I think that's a beautiful component, the honoring. Could I, sh could I share one more thing? Absolutely. I, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I, 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 it, it works for me. Um, people ask me, a lot of people ask me, how can you even be as happy as you are? Because most of the time I'm happy and singing. And I go, well, you know, a lot of it is my personality. It is my personality. But a lot of it, most of it is, a lot of it is training too. I mean, I was beaten as a child. I was abused. I was thrown into jail. I mean, a lot of stuff because mm -hmm. I was raised by two engineers and I just got on their nerves, you know, mm -hmm. I can't help it. But um, something that I've, I've always done besides study metaphysics and, and, and other things. I believe that without getting into parallel lives and all that, I believe that a little part of us, ooh, can I get through this? Mm -hmm. I believe that a little part of us stays wherever that other place is. And mm -hmm. that. Oh, I lost you. That when Rashid went home. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a call, forgive me. Oh, okay, no problem. So I believe that when Rashid went home, that mm -hmm. there was a part of me that was there to welcome him. Yes. Along with, along with all of his family and friends and things. And, you know, when people, people ask me, how can you still be so happy? Because mm -hmm. I'm not always happy. You know, of they don't live not. with me. They don't see crying. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's just I am. And when they ask me about that, I just, I feel such, um, satisfaction knowing that there was a little part of me that welcomed him as well mm. um and and that makes me feel good that that part was there to be with him mm -hmm. and um i don't know that everybody knows that or if that's been explained oh, i'm so sorry i don't know if everybody knows that or if it's mm, forgive me i'm getting called through i don't know if everybody knows that that when you're when you're when your loved one goes home there's a little spark in you there that's going to welcome him or her as well I love that metaphor, and I, I, I think it's the first time I've heard it, and, I, and it's almost like it went right to my third eye, where as he's fearfully going through that tunnel, and you're there with that hand, that shining light, and just yeah. the, the joy he felt going through. And so that's yeah. a beautiful metaphor to, to perhaps allow people to breathe in the life force and breathe in that, that you also contributed to their beautiful return home. So. That's a, a beautiful metaphor. And again, if it tweaks some uh, tears for people, so be it. Because again, we love our tears, do we not? Oh, we do. And I know that I can't help people with this, but good God, people don't know what to say to people that are mourning. And I'm sure I'm just as guilty. I've learned just to say almost nothing. But um, like I mentioned to you, if one more metaphysical person tells me how happy Rashid is, right. I'm going to hit him on the head with my vodka. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, it, it, you know <laughs> what would be again and I, because you've, you've actually had people say things to you is there one or yeah. two things that you actually found to be quite useful for people to say or express what what has actually uplifted you a little bit or at least allowed you to feel a connection that served you less is better really and I know people don't know what to say and, and they kind of, um, if, you know, there's a no win though. I mean, when we had a celebration, people came and talked so much about Rashid. It was so beautiful to learn so much about him. Um, his employers, I mean, his employees, the people that work for him loved him so much. Yeah. They were crying. I was the one that kind of had to be the rock and 
say it, it's going to be okay. And they, it was beautiful for me because I knew Rashid was an extraordinary human being, and I know that he really supported people. But to have his employees come and just kind of cry to me what a mentor he was for them, you know. Um, so I found myself, you're during, during that time, I don't know what takes over, but you're not in your body. You know, you're serving food, you're serving liquor, you're, you're consoling people, you know, you're consoling people when inside you just like, oh, but I think probably less, and I don't know how to teach this. I don't know, you know, I don't know how to teach this. When I, I didn't go to the bank for like two months because everybody knew us at the bank. And I knew that the minute I had to get the name changed and things, there would be so many questions. And, mm. and there was, and, and these, these people didn't know what to say. And they asked, they asked such terrible questions. I don't think you're supposed to ask how somebody dies. I would never ask how somebody died, mm. but the curiosity was like too much for people. Mm. So they don't, they, they, they don't realize that you're looking at the widow saying, please relive mm. what happened to your husband mm. for my curiosity. Mm. So, and again, you know, every morning I wake up and I go, dear God, make me a better person. Wonderful <laughs> so, when <laughs> yeah. so when I'm going in the bank, I'm understanding that maybe these young people don't know what to say, but oh my God, when people, I mean, you tell me, are you supposed to ask people how they died? That's just a curiosity thing. That seems um, unreasonable to me. Mm. Again, it's, it's a, I guess for some people, it is a way to reach out, to try to build that rapport, to express the condolences, to, to say something, to fill the gap. Yeah. I do have a question though, because one of the things that's hurt me and it's actually triggered my tears a lot is with the COVID-19. And we are having a, a vulnerable part of society who are getting, it, especially our seniors and our elders, who are then hospitalized, and then they get the situation where they have to die alone. Oh, so, God. So my father, again, broke his, he fractured his femur uh, last month, and I had 10 days with my mom, and she wasn't allowed to go see my dad. Oh, my God. And they've been married 60-something years, and it was just, it was daily. I didn't know what to say. I, I Honestly, I was, I was praying for guidance and that, and Fortunately, my sister is a nurse, and she was sort of visiting my dad. At least he had someone there. Yet, what what would be a way to bridge that uncertainty, bridge that vulnerability, bridge that fear, and, and fill it with love or compassion? Given your experiences over the last few months, what what might be a tip or a, a way that? Yeah. That's, that's two different things. I can't even, you know, without going into the whole, what is the perfection of this? Mm. Because we know all things are perfect. You just mm. don't know it at the time. Mm. But with what's going on, I can't even remember what that virus is called. It's like I have a, a brain stacoma. I know it. I used to call it something 17. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody pointed that's out. Great. It's, it's 19. No, I don't know yeah. what it's called. Yeah, that's that's, that's a great stacoma to block out. It's, <laughs> it's really... And, 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 and again, see your met, your metaphysical answer to that, which was very pure. It's not about having the right answer for everyone. It's about one possibility. It could be just saying, ask yourself, what's perfect about this, or what's great about yeah. this. And and for a senior to say, well, at least I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to uh, contract it. I'm not going to be another statistic. I'm going to take care of myself. And for many of these yeah. seniors, maybe taking care of themselves is the lesson. Maybe like for the first time, to actually really put themselves first. Instead of the yeah. kids and the grandkids and the, the someone else, the, the, the seniors are actually asked to, to take care of themselves and, and place themselves first. So again, maybe that will resonate. Maybe someone will, will, will send a bad comment and tell us how <laughs> no compassion we're expressing yet. I just well, want I am sure that you have experienced as I have that most people don't look at everything in life as being perfect how can this be perfect? Mm. I believe, and I believe that you probably do as well, that you create, accept, and attract everything into your life. And so if you believe that, I'm, I'm trying not to counsel people. People are calling me for counseling because they know my background. And I'm thinking, listen, I can barely get through the day. I don't have time to counsel you. But the truth is, of course, that I do. Very few people can honestly say to someone, this is perfect. Look for the perfection in it. Uh, I know you run with a lot of really high level people and maybe they can, but if you say that to someone, 
even if they're an old soul. I'm dealing with a very old soul right now. He's very young. He's 39. Mm. And he's having a lot of, oh, poor me and this, that, and the mm. other. And I know that everyone is different. So my answer to everything is let your heart speak. Beautiful. Just let your heart speak, which yes. means for most people, and certainly someone like me, you do it very well, is just shut up, take a breath, and, and go from there. Because everyone is just love. I mean, everyone is just love. They're just love. That's why I get boys and girls mixed up sometimes, because they're <laughs> just love. <laughs> this looks like love to me. I like that purple aura. I, 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 think, I, think, I think some of our people who watch our video today are going to take, that is their main takeaway <laughs> of our session. <laughs> it's just love. But, you know, it's, you know, it's absolutely true. If you speak from the heart, it doesn't even hardly matter what the words are because the heart's going to hear the heart. Um, I would say that less is better, you know, less is better. But what's going on with that 17 currently? That's just got me mine. I don't, I, well, I don't understand. I think your approach right to it is very good right now because definitely less is more with that. I lost you. There, I think we got yeah. you back. All right. Yeah. So, so that's great advice. Again, it, I know you don't like to give advice yet. It's wisdom. <laughs> And I just pick up with the, the, the perfection component because, again, I think both of us explored that and it's, it's great that it's working with you. I played with, again, perfection. And then, again, I think another phrase that you heard is, is find the magic in this experience or find the gift yeah. in this experience. The one I've been experimenting with the last three months has been the miracle. Because yeah. uh, since meeting uh, Miss Williamson, and uh, Course in Miracles. I've been playing with miracles. So find the miracle in it. And, and that's the one that's serving me at this time is that, and it's just so bizarre because you get so many miracles in your life, right? Yeah. It's like- All day and, long. And it's just so like, it's beyond reality. And so that's where live a miraculous life, infuse the word miracle in your life. You'll get them. I like of, that. I like that better. People can relate to that much, much better. Well, and, um, the when, I met, when I met you and I met Rashid, it was a miracle. Yeah. Goosebumps, everything. Because there was that love. And again, I think you guys know a little bit. My, my, I was raised by with two older Trinidadian brothers. And yeah, Trinidad yeah. has been in my whole life since I was like yeah. six years old. And, yeah. and it just, it continues. So, uh, yeah, I, I just felt that I wanted to definitely reach out. And I, I had Thank a feeling you. some of your wisdom was going <laughs> to not only assist some of the people who might see this, uh, hopefully we, our vibrations are up in different dimensions, giving a high fi and, mm. and uh, it's been great to see you. You as well. Thank you so, so much. Mm -hmm.